Hi, I'm Gohar Vardanyan, and this is a lessonette for strings by mail. In this lessonette, I'm going to talk about grace notes that you will encounter in our repertoire. Now, grace notes are ornaments, and they are there to embellish the note or the melody that you are playing. And the key there is to make sure that they sound really light and graceful, and they don't distract and um, grab all the attention from the melody. Grace notes, as you know, they're written with a small font note, um, either before or after the principal note. Um, depending on where it's written, it means different things, but it could be a note that's below in pitch, the principal note or it could be a note that's above the pitch of the principal note. What pitch it actually is, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a second, it could be a third, a fourth. Uh, that really depends on the music you're playing. Now, if the grace note is written before the pitch, that means that you are actually plucking that note, the tiny little note, and you're slurring into the principal note. So if I had an A written in full size and a G sharp right before it in a small note, then I would play the G sharp and slur into the A. You would never really play both. You wouldn't do. You wouldn't do this. Um, if it was written as a, a note above, so a B was the small note and the A was the principal note, you would pluck the B and you slur into the A. The speed at which you do it really depends on the music that you are playing. So if you're playing something really slow and beautiful and sad, you probably wouldn't want to to have really fast grace notes. But if you're playing something really fast, you can't really afford to have. Um, luscious, slow, um, beautiful grace notes in there because then you will be slowing down the whole piece. So that really is uh, particular to the piece that you're playing and the mood and the rhythm and everything. Uh, most of the time the grace notes are written uh, with a little dash through them and I was reading somewhere that actually having a dash or not having a dash has a difference even though a lot of times uh, when we interpret music we kind of treat them the same. Um, so if, the, if there is a, a dash through the little grace note, that means that that note has to come before the beat and the principal note is on the beat. So if I'm playing an A, I'm just going to repeat it so that I establish a beat. Um, a grace note with a dash would be... I'm playing it right before the beat and I'm playing the A that I'm hammering into on the beat. If that grace note appeared without the dash, some interpretation says that it means to play the G on the beat and you delay the principal note by playing it right after the beat. So it'd be, so the A is a little bit late and the G sharp is on the beat. Um, a lot of times the way I have chosen to do a grace note on the beat or, be, uh, or before the beat is by what sounds best and uh, what makes it sound more um, fluent and uh, less distracting. So I haven't really paid attention to the dashes. Sometimes it really doesn't uh, mean that. It just uh, is, it's the engraving uh, of the music. So, but it's a, it's a nice piece of information to have just in case uh, you want to try it out and see which one sounds better. Maybe the way it's written actually means what the composer meant. Um, also, you will see grace notes written after the principal note, which means something different. So if you have an A, and then followed by a small grace note that let's say is a B, you would play the principal note and then you play the B. Um, usually that small grace note embellishes the note that comes afterwards, even though it is attached to the previous note. So this you will see a lot in, in Tarragas music or in Spanish repertoire. So for example, in Capricho Arabe, right before scale, there is a place where you have an A and then you have an E up here. And instead of just playing this, there's an A attached to a grace note that's an E, and then there is a full size E written. So what you do is this. So it embellishes the E. It's kind of, there's two E's. Uh, one of them is gotten there by a glissando, and then the other one is plucked because it's the actual note. So. Uh, whether you do a glissando or whether you do a slur, um, it depends on the fingering, the piece, and how it's indicated. A lot of times in guitar music we rely on the addition, so the editor would actually give us the fingering. So pay attention to it. If you have to do two different fingerings written for the small little note and the principal note, that means that you're going to probably slur either a hammer-on or a pull-off. If you have the same finger written with a little dash in between, um, you would then... Um, actually glissando it, whichever sounds best. Main thing with ornaments is to remember that they are ornaments and they're there to embellish what you're playing and not to alter it. So what you should do is when you learn a piece, 
with uh, with ornaments first learn it without them so just learn the skeleton just play the notes that are written in full size uh, practice it with the metronome really put the rhythm ahead and and learn what it's supposed to sound like then once it's ingrained in you and you know what the flow is what the pulse of the piece is then you can add the ornaments and if the ornament starts to distract or alter the rhythm you will notice it because you actually know what it's supposed to sound like oftentimes people tackle the piece with all the notes and all the ornaments and what happens oftentimes is the ornaments become the main focus and they actually to change what the rhythm is because either we're technically not able to execute them fast enough or or we haven't really figured out the right fingering whatever the reason we end up altering the piece in order to accommodate the ornament but really it's the other way around the ornament is only there to to or to embellish to make something better and not to change it so first learn the skeleton of the piece and then uh, pay attention to what the ornament is, see which one sounds more seamless, which one's um, easier to do, which one doesn't distract too much, and choose that fingering to play it with. One thing I forgot to mention um, about not playing both notes, that applies if you're playing the ornament on the same string. Um, sometimes the fingering won't allow you to play a slur on the same string and you'll have to do something cross string, in which case you either you have to hammer on on the other string, which doesn't always sound very clean. Um, and sometimes you don't get the sound right. So in that case, you might have to pluck both notes uh, or, or the other way around. In, in that case, if you find yourself having to pluck both of them, you have to really do um, a very gentle um, playing just to make sure that nothing sounds really heavy and doesn't distract. So I hope this video helps you in executing your grace notes. I will try to make more videos uh, specifically concentrating on different kinds of ornaments like glissando, trills, and mordants, and um, try to help you execute those as well. Thank you very much for watching.